Hey everyone, John here. And in this quick video, I want to talk about secrets. Because what we find in computing today in our systems, we tend to have secrets everywhere. We might have secrets in configuration files for services. We might have secrets in our code, secrets in our scripts. And this is a really bad thing because we forget the secrets are there. And then we go and upload this to GitHub or Azure repos. And then everyone sees our secrets. This secret could be a password. This secret could be a signature to access a storage service. So we want to avoid having these secrets in code. But before we even think about, well, how can I avoid secrets in code? I want to think about, well, can we get rid of secrets altogether? In the words of Mr. Miyagi, <laughs> best defense, no be there. So the best defense for our secrets is to avoid having the secret in the first place. And if we think about most Azure resources today, a lot of these resources can actually integrate with, for example, Azure Active Directory. So I can think about in Azure, let's say, for example, I have some storage service. Well, on that storage service, I can have role-based access control. I would normally give myself permissions to, uh, this could be a SQL database, etc. And ordinarily, I might need a secret to go and get maybe a password for a certain account to access that. But if I think about accessing this from another service in Azure, this could be, for example, a virtual machine. It could be something in an app service plan. It could be a function, some kind of serverless compute. There's something called managed identities. And there's system managed identities, and there's user managed identities. And I'm going to focus on the system managed identities. And the idea behind this is all of the compute resources in Azure can have this managed identity enabled for it. So essentially, this VMA, there is actually kind of in the Azure AD, I can have this security principle that represents VMA. And only something in VMA can actually go to an endpoint and then request an OAuth2 token for that that represents VMA. Well, now, on the resource I want to access, I can say, well, hey, the managed identity, I'm going to switch pens, the managed identity for VMA, it can have uh, read-write. It can have certain permissions to that service. Same if I'm running an app service plan, um, if I'm running in an Azure function. So I have all these compute services that can easily, just with a flick of a switch, have a system managed identity. Only that compute service can act as that managed identity, can go and get a token for that identity. So I can then use that managed identity as part of the controls on the service I want to interact with. This could be storage services, um, it could be Key Vault, many other things can then integrate with Azure AD for its role-based access control. So maybe I don't need any secrets. I can use the managed identity for my compute services to be given permission to access the thing I actually want to talk to. So that there's no secret. Even if the service maybe doesn't support Azure AD based access control. For example, let's say now I think about, let's say it's Cosmos DB. So Cosmos DB today does not have Azure AD as a means of access control. Instead, it has kind of these keys. I can think about these read-write keys, or there's kind of read-only keys, so read keys. And in the past, I would think about, well, I get that key and I have to store that somewhere, or I get a special token with limited permissions. But another option for this would be, well, I could actually give the managed identity of a compute service permissions. So my VMA has rights to access the read-write key. And then the process running in VMA could actually go and communicate, get the read-write key because it's managed identity that it is allowed to utilize. It can go and fetch the read-write key and then use the read-write key to actually talk to the resource. That's becoming a very common pattern, especially with things like Cosmos DB. 
I don't want to worry about resource tokens anymore that are very short-lived. Instead, let's use that managed identity, give the managed identity permission to go and get that key, and then I'll interact with that. Again, there's no ongoing secret I'm having to maintain. But what if I can't do that? What if that's not an option? What if I have to have a secret? So at that point, that is where we have a service. I can't really draw a vault, but this is Key Vault. And Key Vault is great for storing different types of things I want to protect. I can think about, hey, it's a key. Something that I'm going to place into the Key Vault. I can't take it out, but the Key Vault can perform um, operations using that key and then give me the result. It can also store secrets, things that I can put in and then take them back out again. So if I am dealing with a service where I have to use some kind of signature to access it, a shared access signature, for example, to storage, uh, maybe I have to have a password for something, well then, yes, I can store that secret in the key vault. Then the problem is, it's a chicken and egg. How do I prove to Key Vault I am who I say I am if I don't have a secret yet? I need something. Well, managed identity, once again, can come in here. Maybe I've got my app service plan, my, my function, whatever. But once again, the ACL on this secret, the permission to use it, in this case, we'll take the VM. Well, VMA is allowed to access that secret. So now, if I need that signature, that other password, whatever, hey, the process running in VMA can go and act as the managed identity, get that OAuth2 token, use it to authenticate itself, and then it'd be authorized to access the secret, get the secret, and then use that against whatever end service it actually needs to do. That's a great option if I have to have some kind of secret in my code. I don't want to put it in any config file, I don't want to put it in the code itself or in scripts or in resource templates. Maybe I'm creating resource templates for Azure and hey, I need this password in here, I need this signature. Don't put it in the template, I can reference signatures. And in Key Vault, I can say, hey, I'm allowed to use this as part of ARM deployments, for example. So often in my ARM templates, if I have to join a domain, that administrative credential, I'll put in the Key Vault and I'll reference the key vault and that secret as part of the template, avoiding putting it in anything. I never want secrets in code. If I can get rid of the secret, fantastic. If I can't directly use the managed identity, I'm gonna put the secret in a key vault and then use the managed identity to authenticate and be authorized to access the secret and then pull it in. Now you do always have to be careful with this. When I'm dealing with secrets and signatures, um, I need to make sure I'm rotating them. So what I should absolutely have is some process that routinely, so there is some kind of process, some compute thing, for example, over here, that maybe fires off every week or every couple of weeks, and it generates a new secret and goes and writes it into here. So I'm I don't wanna have some long-lived secret. So it would cycle that secret, my applications, would have to know, hey, the secret's failing. Ideally, there's two, so it can alternate between them. I could hook into things like Event Grid. Event Grid could fire to say, hey, the secret's changed. The applications could subscribe to Event Grid and say, hey, the secret's changed. Hey, I'll, I'll go and reread it before I continue my ongoing communication with it. So it's just a kind of shift in the way we think about it. The key point is don't put secrets in anything be it a template file, be it a parameter file, be it my script, be it my code. Ideally, there's no secrets. Use my managed identity. If the service I'm trying to access supports Azure AD for role-based access control for those ACLs, do that. If it doesn't, I'm gonna put the secret into Key Vault. And again, still use my managed identity to get permission to read the secret that I'll then use as part of my application. But no matter what the scenario, I'm never putting any secrets within my code, my parameter files, or anything else. So it's just a quick video. Uh, I hope it kind of makes sense. And uh, good luck keeping your secrets.